on that. Yeah. Of course, I. There's something like deeply satisfying about doing a scene like that. Huh? It's funny too, right? <clears throat> Something as simple as rubber dish gloves. I mean, think about it, right? Like these are traditionally thought of as things for like housewives or just like domestic chores in general. But when used in the right context, they're so nefarious. Yeah, to find it. <laughs> ah, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Are you alright? Uh, you did uh you did such a good job on that scene, I was like completely locked in. Like it made it made what I do so much easier because you were so perfect. It was like he was so focused and so vulnerable that, for me, it just made everything. <laughs> just, well, it just made everything easy. So, I owe you a massive debt of gratitude. I suppose thanks are in order. So thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you say you are? Uh, you trained at? That's nice. Wow. Well, you have got a promising future ahead of you. Because that was fantastic. And in fact, I don't even know why I'm still doing the accent. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, <clears throat> like, you know, some actors, like, they've got to stay in character the whole time, you know. They'll never break the accent. They'll just stay totally locked in on set and off set. And it's like they go too deep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I've heard that. I heard that uh, when uh, you know when Jim Carrey was doing uh, Man on the Moon, when he was playing uh, Andy Kaufman, like he he stayed in you know like Andy Kaufman mode the entire time, and look, you know, it was a brilliant performance. So like you know, who are we to judge, right? But uh, yeah, now I. Uh, yeah, acting's a funny thing, isn't it? Again, you all right? Yeah, yeah. No, you were just, you were so good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wild to explore these, uh, these darker, darker sides of, uh, of humanity, you know? Um... I think it was Shakespeare where they said uh, you know these violent delights have violent ends or something like that that's a cool quote yeah <laughs> I actually remember that mostly from uh, Westworld <laughs> that show on HBO that was a good one yeah I really like that how many uh what movie is this for you? No kidding. I would not have guessed. No, you're so relaxed. You're so, um... No, you're a complete natural. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're just so... Locked in. You know? I know, like, like <laughs> the knife and the, and the drill stuff. I know, it's creepy. <clears throat> but I do... 
Yeah, it's funny. I really do enjoy um, playing these like these darker people. Yeah, there's something about it, you know. Yeah, it's fun to be like the hero or the comedian. Like I love, trust me, I love doing comedy. And uh, but there's something interesting about exploring uh, our darker natures, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, there's something, you know, I don't... I have an inherent, you know, like a mistrust of uh, people that portray themselves on the outside as being too good. You know what I mean? Like being some, like, righteous, morally upstanding person. I don't trust it. You know, like, like the most, uh, the most famous case is something like, like a Bill Cosby, you know, you have this person who was, you know, America's dad, Dr. Huxtable, and, you know, he's, like, calling Eddie Murphy and, you know, uh, telling him he shouldn't swear on stage and stuff, and then, you know, behind closed doors, like, he is a, well, you know, we all know that, like, it's, it's dark. It's not cool, so, yeah, I think it's important to, <sighs> to explore our, <sighs> our darker selves, you know, and to not give in to them, but acknowledge that you know, we're all capable of really monstrous things. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm thinking like, like the, the, the televangelist people, you know, uh, and they're all preaching like, you know, like they're all anti, anti-gay weddings and like, you know, saying homosexuality is a sin and stuff, and then you find out they've been, you know, <laughs> soliciting gay prostitutes on the side, and they get busted, and you're just like, <sighs> yeah, I'm reminded of, uh, of that, uh, line, you know, what we, what we resist persists, right? The things we don't accept within ourselves are the things we most despise in other people. You know, it's funny, it's like for me, one of my, uh, one of my big triggers is, uh, people who whine and, uh, complain or, or, like, act like victims. For me, for some reason, that's like, a, that's a big trigger. I get very, very angry. And I, I, I think it's because, uh, I'm a uh, younger brother, and so I was always trying to, you know, compete with my my big brother and, like, be as good and as strong and as smart as he was, and so I was always, like, you know, I was always, like, fighting to, to, to be better or something, and so when I see somebody who's, you know, acting weak, it, uh, I just had this weird, I'm just, like, Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably too harsh. I'm probably too harsh, but again, you know, it's the things we don't, we don't accept within ourselves that we <sighs> take the most, uh, the most umbrage with in other people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, what we resist persists. So, don't resist. But I think, yeah, that's why I I, I enjoy playing these uh these like uh, these darker characters. Um, they uh these foil tops. Anthony Hopkins, right? And uh, I've never had a 
chance to actually meet him, but I have uh, many friends who have met him, and he's, he works a very strong program in AA. He goes to his meetings, and he, he gets up there, and he's like, you know, hi. <sighs> you know, my name's Tony, and I'm an alcoholic, and he's a, just a super down-to-earth guy and super uh, warm and humble, you know, just a really... I've just heard nothing but good things. And here's somebody, you know, who played Hannibal Lecter, you know, this psychopathic murderer who ate his victims. And yet, you know, he was able to tap into that side of himself and and not cast judgment on that character, step into that role. But it didn't consume him. And then you have, you know, the tragic story of something like a, like a Heath Ledger, you know, who was, you know, playing the Joker and Batman. I just went, uh, maybe just went too far, you know, it was too dark for too long and he couldn't, he couldn't bounce in and out of it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I never, I never knew him either, unfortunately. But I bet he was a really cool guy. Seemed like such a cool guy. What an amazing loss, you know, such talent. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw Brokeback Mountain. You ever see that? Such an amazing performance. And, uh, he talked about, you know, with his characters, how, um, he starts off with the voice. You know, it's like, where's their voice? And for him, with that character, and, uh, Brokeback, he said, you know, he had a voice like a clenched fist. A voice like a clenched fist. And and if you go watch that performance and you see him, you'll know what he means. Cause he, you know, he, he, he talks his whole time in this kind of accent. And you can see, like, like in his jaw, like, there's always like a, there's always like a tightness there, like he doesn't move his mouth that much. His mouth, his teeth are always right about there, clenched. And there's just this, you know, this demon inside him where he can't, he can't be his true self. You know, he's always, he's fighting. You know, what he really wants, of course, is the love of Jake Gyllenhaal. But on the outside, his family and his community, he wants to be a good dad. He wants to be a good husband. But this is not who he was as a person, so he had a voice like a clenched fist, a clenched fist, and, uh, yeah, it's just a brilliant performance, you know, it's just brilliant, yeah, so for me, one of the things I, you know, I just love about, uh, acting is the full acceptance of everything that is being a human, Right. You know, all of us like to think that we would never have been, you know, the Nazi guard. We all think that we never would have done that. And yet, hey man, millions of people did. They just looked the other way, you know. You dehumanize people in some way, shape, or form. You make them the other. You make... We, we get into like, we're, well, I'm in, I'm in team A, and they're in team B, and team B is bad, and therefore, it doesn't matter what happens to them, and it's a, you know, if you don't accept that side of yourself, I don't know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's good, yeah, I don't think it's good, we should just embrace the fact that, you know, we're all capable of that kind of behavior, but the important thing is we don't act on it, you know what I mean, that's the important thing, yeah, but again, you know, playing somebody who's like torturing somebody or doing something like I just did to you, and again, you were so good, man, it is like, uh, 
I'm just embracing that there's there's a side of me that could do something that horrible somehow, you know, in the right circumstances if I was pushed a certain way. Not that I ever want to, but but uh, yeah, it's important that we accept ourselves for everything we are and everything we're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we're all flawed. We're all... <laughs> we're all sinners. <clears throat> Might as well have a desperado. I have to go to confession. I'm a sinner. But, uh, you know, we all are. It's like... I get, anyway, I think about, I think about forgiveness a lot, I think about how much we try to make others wrong, you know, we're right, our cause is right, their cause is wrong, such a it occurs to me as a narrow-minded way of viewing the world. <clears throat> yeah, the world is rarely, it's rarely black and white. It's almost all a wash of gray, hues and hues and hues of gray. Yeah. Hang on a sec. think? Do you think you are capable of some, you know, some really messed up stuff? Yeah. Well, I think that's the key. You know, I was just going, yeah, yeah, I could do that, but I choose not to. I don't disavow that side of myself. I accept and I embrace it. And it is in the embracing of the darkness that we are able to move forward with grace, forgiveness, and acceptance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, what was my first movie? <laughs> well, funny little story, actually. So I uh, had just graduated college, <clears throat> and I got a job. I booked this role uh, in a film called Dusty's August. And it was written by a guy named Phil. Phil was a uh, retired engineer. He would help design the roads around Seattle. And uh, in retirement, his dream was to write a musical. And uh, and he did. He wrote. He wrote this really cute musical film. And I played the lead role. I was Dusty. And I was this kid who was obsessed with, like, gangster films and, like, the mob. So I, for my research, I went and watched a bunch of old, you know, Humphrey Bogart films and, and, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, little gangster movies. And, uh, we started filming this one summer. And it was, it was paid, you know, he was really nice, he was funny. He's this nice guy. And uh, he hired several other people out of uh, my class at uh, the University of Washington. And we, I remember my fondest memories. <clears throat> we went out to this town called uh, Waterville. I think it was called Waterville. Uh, it's out uh, east of Seattle. And it's this really cute, cute old. It has like a, a kind of a ghost town vibe to it. There's like this like one 
old hotel from like the 1870s, you know. Uh, I think you can still stay in it today because we stayed in it. And it had these like, you know, old like buildings, old this old church that we did a bunch of shots in. This cool old like 18, I don't know, 1870s, 1890s, whatever it was. You know, church, white, white church. Just, it just was classic, you know. Even in the out, out back was funny. They had like the original uh, like outhouses still. Which, isn't it funny how we're all obsessed with going to the bathroom? So like when you see like an old outhouse, you're like, I guess everybody poops. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. But I remember even like the old outhouse, you know, it was like, you had these, it was funny because you had these, uh, these, these like four seats in a row. And it'd be very weird not to have a divider. So it's like, I guess you just went out, uh, sat down on your seat, uh, like like right next to somebody, like as close as you are to me right now, and just uh, did your business. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's funny how we, at least I, I find that kind of stuff interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, the meme that keeps going around of like, you know, like the, the medieval toilets, you know, you see the, the castle with the with the, the, the bump out of the castle wall and then like the the pipe that goes down the outside and that's like the the poo the poo pipe. And then some poor guy, you know, it was his job to go down there and like shovel out the muck. <laughs> and we all at least I found that fascinating. I remember seeing that as a kid, I was like, Oh, whoa, medieval toilets. Anyway fascination with the darker side of humanity. It's a real thing. Not that going to the bathroom is dark. It is just, it's just it's a thing we all have to do. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I got sidetracked. Anyway, Dusty's August, this movie. What well, the funny thing, the interesting thing was is that uh, <clears throat> Phil, you know, had never made a movie and, and I don't think he had uh, any idea how difficult it is to actually edit a movie, you know, it's one thing to, uh, to film it, and it is a very different thing to edit it and cut it all together and make an actual movie, and to this day, you know, I have never seen one shot, yeah, not, not one scene, I don't know if that ever, I don't know, we filmed a ton, we have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of footage from, you know, all over, and interior shots, and car shots and shots in a field and shots in the church and in front of the church and singing songs and and uh, all kinds of stuff and this is funny how uh that, yeah that was my the first movie i ever filmed and got paid for and have never seen one shot from it yeah so there you go but uh Yeah, I'm really grateful that you were my, uh, that you were, you got, they cast you. Yeah. Now you have a serious future ahead of you. You really do. You're just natural. You know, you're just, you have an ease on camera. You're not trying to, you're never, you're never trying to show, you're not trying to show off, you know. I had a, an acting coach one time. And he really hit home the idea of being expressive, not impressive. Be expressive, not impressive. And man, that was a great lesson. Because I remember the first time I went to that acting class, I did a scene with a buddy of mine. And uh, you know, I, I thought I was pretty hot stuff coming out of you know, college and coming down to L.A. and and being all like, you know, let me, let me really, let me show, let me show this acting class what I'm made of, what Jeremiah's made of, and, uh, I laid a, you know, I laid a big turd, and, uh, got taken down, and gently, it wasn't like he wasn't like one of those, you know, crazy psycho acting coaches, but he definitely, I got the picture that it was like, Maybe that was not as good a scene as I thought it was. You know what I mean? And, uh, I remember that being very eye-opening for me. Yeah, it was, it 
was like, okay, I have a lot to learn. And I remember I learned I learned more in six months in that acting class. His name was uh, Tom Todorov. I think he's still an acting coach in New York right now. Tom Todorov. And uh, I learned more in that class in six months than I did in three years of theater school combined. I mean, it was a real education. Just learning how to be still and relax and focus on being a professional human being, which is what being an actor is, you know? So, yeah, I'm definitely drawn to, I'm just drawn to both. I love comedy, you know? I love being silly. I love making people laugh. But I also really enjoy exploring my darker side and my I guess that's uh, that's that's just it, you know, that part of you that uh, that might make might make you uncomfortable. And instead of shunning it, going like, "Yep, I have that in me. Let's go there for a little while. I don't want to stay there forever, but I'm gonna go there for a little while and make believe land, which is acting. And I'll play a character that can." You know, do something as horrible as murder, or torture, or rape, or any other of the horrible, horrible things that humans do to one another. And it's like, yep, that's in me. Um, and I never want it to control me, you know what I mean? I never want to be somebody, I never want to be that, you know, televangelist who's like, shouting down, like, you know, being gay is a sin or something that's silly and that is moronic and then, you know, secretly be, you know, <laughs> getting high and buying male prostitutes. I mean, yeah, I, I really, I really hate hypocrisy. So that's kind of what draws me to it. Yeah. Just embracing all sides of me, trying to love all sides of me, even the sides I don't like, even the sides I want to reject. Just going like, yep, no, that's, that's a part of me. <laughs> that's in there too. Uh, I'm not, I don't like that that's in me, but like, yeah, that's in me. I could do that. If I had to, I don't want to. Hope to God, I never, I never have to die, because I hate violence. I hate it. I hate violence, and I hate bullying, and I hate, I hate injustice, you know. I hate seeing people, um, bullied. Ooh, ooh, that really bothers me. It really bothers me. I hate people being made less than, you know. Especially if it's, you know, for things that I have no control over. Like, that's why I, I like, I hate uh, things like racism, sexism, you know, misogyny. You know, I, I, I it's just so foolish. It's so demeaning and so pointless. But, um, yeah. a little, little more insight to me, but I think before too long, they're going to make us go back on set, and they're going to make us go back into that dark place for round two. Do you think you're ready? Have you got the stones to make it happen? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Just remember, embrace all parts of you. The good, the bad, the ugly. It's what makes you you and makes you beautiful. Just like me.
So, what you say, you and me, go back on that set and scare the living piss out of that crew. You want to make them terrified? That's great. You're awesome. You're really, really awesome. I'm very glad I got to meet you and spend this time with you. All right. Are you ready? You ready to embrace your dark side? That was weird. You ready to embrace your dark side? That's better. English accents are quite tricky for a yank like myself. It's hard to stay in perfect character. You never know when you're going to slip. All right. Our break time's over. Let's go make something beautiful. Here we go.